Truly has been an incredible journey, Mr. Shivani. God bless you. You're a national treasure. And thank you for all your contributions to the world of wrestling. Man, what a great story. Oh, hi, everybody. It's I, Jeremy, a.k.a. XLJ, the OG. And as you all know, I absolutely love and adore the world of professional wrestling. I have all of my life. I've always been enamored with it. Just from everything down to the physicality, to the characters, to the interviews, to the entrances, to the pomp, the circumstances, all of the above. But most importantly, what I love the most about professional wrestling is great storytelling. And over the years, there has been some incredible stories told. But right now in the world of professional wrestling, there's one story in particular that is truly art imitating life and is by far one of the most interesting unique stories I've seen told in the world of wrestling over the past 20 plus years and that's the story of Hangman Adam Page. So Adam Page would get his first real start in Ring of Honor. And there, this good old West Virginia boy would work his way up the card. And a lot of people would notice how talented of an athlete and wrestler he was, including the Young Bucks. And the Young Bucks even went on to say that Adam Page was somebody you could build a company around, thus joining up and recruiting him for the Bullet Club. And they would even go on to win the ROH six-man tag team titles. And Hangman would become a part of the Bullet Club. And he would join his fellow Bullet Club members in Japan. Where he would go on to compete in some incredible matches. Even wrestled in the G1 Climax. Is having a very successful singles run. And is a hot free agent. And he could easily jump ship to say a big company like the WWE or stay with New Japan, but instead, he decided to go with his friends and form AEW. And they would make this announcement the very next year. And what I think is very important about this, if you notice, Hangman Page is actually the one holding the cell phone with AEW on it. So he is the very first person to ever indicate anything about All Elite Wrestling. And remember what the Young Bucks said. Hangman Page was the type of guy you can build a wrestling company around, and that's exactly what they were about to set out and do. As a matter of fact, at the AEW's first press conference, Hangman Page would declare that he would go on and become the very first All Elite Wrestling Champion, and that very first step was winning the Casino Battle Royale at Double or Nothing which he would go on and do and thus earn a shot in the inaugural AEW Heavyweight Championship match against Chris Jericho. And yes, Chris Jericho is one of the greatest of all time. However, Adam Page's confidence is through the roof and rightfully so. And this would be Adam Page's biggest match to date. And as per tradition in the Elite, anytime any of them had a big time matchup they would usually back each other up in their corner and hangman page would actually ask the young bucks to see if they would corner him at all out and for all those matches getting out of kind of the title match for the years uh second um, i just want to ask like if you guys would be able to, if you want to. Yeah, I would love to. We just got the ladder match that night, and we gotta, oh, we gotta go to the coaching position. It's, it's, it's cool. It's, we can make it. We, no, 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 it's cool. No, no, no. We, just, got, we might be able to make it. No, 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 no. You got, you got the ladder match. You got it. And although he would pretend everything was cool, you could tell he was a little hurt by this. And why wouldn't you be? Your best friend's saying, you know what, it's your big moment, but I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to support you. But Hangman had a fire in him, obsessed with becoming the very first AEW champion. But he's going to have to do it against Chris Jericho. And he would go on to have a hell of a match at All Out for the AEW Championship. However, unfortunately, in the end, he just didn't have enough, and Chris Jericho's experience would prevail. Hangman would be absolutely devastated by this loss.
So Hangman's obviously dejected from his loss at All Out. And he is still a great in-ring competitor and racking up wins, but he just doesn't have the same swagger as he had before. That confidence, it just quite isn't there. It's a chink in his armor, if you will. And as Hangman's career would go on, you would start to see a little bit of darkness come out as he, what we sometimes here in life do, develop a crutch. We depend on things to get us through life. And for Hangman, it was alcohol. And it's a realistic thing. There's millions of people out there right now who, unfortunately, are using it as a suppressant. And it started off, really, with Hangman casually drinking, and it was joked around. Even that's how become the anxious millennial cowboy, if you will. All this time, Hangman is racking up wins. However, he does want out of the elite. Even goes to the Young Bucks and tells them he wants out. However, the Young Bucks, they don't want anything to do with this. They don't even want to hear him out. They say, no, you're going to be a member of the elite. So, Hangman, at this point, just kind of rolling along, doesn't really care. It's just like, all right, fine, whatever. But I'm still going to do my own thing. But interestingly enough, Hangman wouldn't be the only member of the elite going through a slump. Was fellow elite member Kenny Omega. And they were both kind of in a lost space at the time. Kenny losing three straight pay-per-view matches and Hangman just not quite having as much confidence. So it was there they decided to form a partnership and have a go about it in the tag team division in AEW. And Hangman and Kenny would go on to win the AEW Tag Team Championship. And their chemistry, it wasn't the greatest, but they were both such great technical wrestlers that they really were successful in the tag team division and most importantly they believed in each other now hangman would go on to recoup with the bucks and was still a part of the elite even though he wanted out however there would be a tag team battle royal to determine new number one contenders for the aew tag team championships and it just so happened to be the Young Bucks would be in that match, and not only would they be in it, they would go on to win the Battle Royal, thus setting up a dream tag team match at the next pay-per-view, Revolution, where they would challenge Hangman Page and Kenny Omega for the gold. And at this point, the resentment and Hangman Page towards the Young Bucks was at an all-time high. As the build-up to this tag team match, the Young Bucks would kind of really piss all over Hangman Page and trying to kind of tear him down, whereas Hangman knew that him and Kenny was the better team, even though the Bucks were more experienced. And this championship clash would start off in a very technical and scientific way. However, as the match progressed, resentment from Hangman would take over and this would soon turn into a physical war between the Young Bucks and Hangman and Kenny. And in all honesty, the Bucks kind of brought this on themselves by pushing Hangman so far. So much so that he would go on to spat in the face of Matt Jackson. And this, this match would become very violent very quickly. And even an indie taker on the outside couldn't stop Hangman Page. And the Young Bucks would just pour it on all throughout the match and would come extremely close to winning the AEW Tag Team Championship. However, Hangman was there for his partner Kenny and would go on to get the win for his team. And this match would go on to be one of the greatest tag team matches in professional wrestling history. It had it all. The physicality, the in-ring action, and the amazing story being told here on this night at Revolution. And afterwards, the Bucks and Kenny would make up. But Hangman Page, 
Not so much. He wasn't quite ready and didn't want anything to do with the Bucks. And there's a moment after this match where it appears Hangman could possibly turn on Kenny, but... He doesn't do it. He stays loyal to his friend. And that loyalty to Kenny would be the only reason Hangman would willingly team up with the Young Bucks and the rest of the league in their war against the Inner Circle. And ultimately, they would prevail. Now, interestingly enough, as Hangman wants nothing to do with any group, he's still being recruited and recruited heavily by the Dark Order. And this would be very important later on in the story. Kenny and Hangman would continue to go on and dominate the tag team division for months and rack up win after win because they were such great in-ring competitors. However, if you were going to beat them, you weren't going to beat them in the ring. You had to beat them psychologically. And the way to get to that would have to be through Hangman Page because remember, he still has his doubts. And the team that would do that would be FTR. Now FTR would come in and they would be friends with the Elite and the Young Bucks at first and Hangman. And Hangman was more relatable to him because hey, they were Carolina boys. Was into the same type of stuff, if you will. However, FTR only cared about one thing and one thing only and that was winning the World Tag Team Championship. FTR would encounter the Young Bucks in a gauntlet match to determine number one contenders to the tag titles, and Hangman Page would actually cost the Young Bucks, thus doing something he never really thought he would do. And you could see the guilt on his face of doing this action, but this action ultimately caused the Young Bucks to turn against him and kick him out of the elite. Thus, Hangman Page was no more with the elite and you could just see this heartbroken and dejected hangman just sad by his action and kenny was upset with hangman's decision not understanding why he would join forces with ftr but he accepted it as long as hangman was with kenny and they would go on to retain the tag titles but he wasn't quite sure and this dissension ultimately would cost them the tag team championship and on this night at all out you could just see hangman and kenny just were not in sync and against an expert team like ftr this would cost them thus losing the tag titles and one of the saddest moments of hangman's career would be at the end of this match when he would try to fall into kenny's arms and Kenny just let him fall down face on the mat. <sighs> Man, that's a tough pill to swallow. <sighs> so, Hangman obviously is dejected at this point. He's been kicked out of the Elite, even though he wanted out from them from the get-go, but still now he's been kicked out. And his only friend at this point just doesn't even care anymore. Now he's ready to focus on his own ambitions and Kenny Omega's sights would be set on the AEW World Championship. Now in order for Kenny to get there though, he would have to win a World Championship Eliminator Tournament. And guess who just so happened to be in that tournament on the opposite end of things? That's right, Hangman Adam Page. And as fate would have it at Full Gear 2020, Hangman Page would beat Kenny Omega one-on-one -on -one in the finals of the Eliminator Tournament to determine the new number one contender to the AEW Championship. Now, Kenny has a pretty dominant run through this tournament. Hangman, on the other hand, he bracks up the wins, obviously, but once again, he's just not himself. And even admits that he's a little scared to face Kenny. So they get to full gear, they have their match, and Kenny would prevail ultimately in the end. At this point, Hangman has hit rock bottom. He has no friends, he has no title opportunities. What more is there for him? Except.
But wait, maybe he would have some friends. And the only solace Hangman would have is at the bottom of a bottle. And in looking for his search for alcohol, he'd come across the Dark Order. Fuck Hangman! Fuck Hangman! Fuck and this hangman. outburst for Hangman Fuck would hangman. almost be therapeutic, as he is admitting Fuck his hangman. failures in a way. Fuck. And like Hangman Page, the Dark Order have a unique backstory as well. Originally, this group started off as a group of bad guys or heels who would try to get other wrestlers to join their rankings. And they would be led by the great Brody Lee. However, due to unfortunate circumstances, Brody Lee passed away. And thus the Dark Order's evolution changed dramatically. Instead of being heelish bad guys, they turned into a group of oddball misfits who were lovable goofballs. Hangman Page wasn't quite sure what to think of the Dark Order. However, Hangman just needed somebody to talk to at this point in his career. And the Dark Order would have his back. And although they were a bunch of goofballs, still... They made him laugh, they made him smile, and they made him feel happiness again. And that's what friends are for, is to make you feel comfortable. And Hangman Page had a great group of friends in the Dark Order, and they would have some unique times as well. And throughout time, the Dark Order would build Hangman's confidence up. They told him, you could do it. You still are Hangman Adam Page. You can still be the franchise of this company. And they would build his confidence week after week until Hangman finally did get the gumption and the courage to go ahead and challenge for the AEW World Championship. However, standing in his way would be his former partner, Kenny Omega. And at this point, Kenny's character has went completely opposite direction than Hangman did, as he is now a dominant champion in multiple companies and referred to as the god of pro wrestling. And although Hangman's confidence was there, he still was a little bit afraid to touch Kenny because of their friendship they had. Could he really throw hands against Kenny Omega? However, as time would progress, the Elite would just destroy and rip Hangman apart. Hangman would put up his newly won number one contendership against the Elite in a 10-man tag team match. Whereas if the Elite won, he would lose his world championship opportunity. However, if Hangman won, the Dark Order would receive a shot at the Young Bucks Tag Team Championship. As if almost Hangman felt like he owed this to the Dark Order to try to get them a tag team championship match. And they were united more than ever before and ready to take on the Elite. And in a shocking twist, unfortunately, Hangman could not beat the Elite as it was a three on one affair. And thus, he lost his world title opportunity. And after this devastating loss, Hangman could have easily gone down a path of self-loathing again. However, he knew what his purpose was. He would go on to tell the Dark Order that he still loved them. However, he needed to be alone and work things out on his own for the time being. And this is Hangman coming to fruition and owning his past mistakes. And the Elite would just treat Hangman like garbage and beat him down. However... The Dark Order was respectful and stayed out of Hangman's business, and Kenny would tell K Hangman he'd never be the champion. Hangman would take some time away from AEW, and part of this was so he could actually see the birth of his first child. However, Hangman would be back sooner than later, and in coming back, he would win the Casino Ladder Match and thus become the new number one contender for the AEW Championship. From there, Hangman would go on to cut a passionate promo in what would be a pivotal moment in his character's arc. He would come out and admit his past failures and how he got back up on the horse yet again. He acknowledged the Dark Order and their support 
of what they were able to do for him. And thus, he was ready to do some cowboy shit. Finally come around and have the confidence in his abilities. Hangman would help his friends in the Dark Order defeat the Elite and get the upper hand in their feud. Hangman was ready for his world championship match. And thus, there would be one more stop in the road of Hangman's journey. I wish I could share your excitement. I wish I could share the excitement and the enthusiasm of uh, these wonderful fans. But I gotta say, hey, man, I'm a little sad actually. I mean, we were friends, we were partners. As a member of the elite, we were like family. You see all of this? Everything here, this was meant for you. And if it wasn't for your insecurities, if it wasn't for your failures, you. Hey. you know, you, uh, you talk a lot about me choking, my failures, my insecurities, and maybe yeah. you're right, yeah. But if I remember, you once had another tag team partner who maybe you felt like you didn't measure up to either. And over the past few years, you've told me a lot of lies. You told me I was wasn't good enough. You told me I couldn't beat you, you let me fall flat on my face, but the biggest lie that you ever told me was last year at Full Gear in the Eliminator Tournament when you beat me, you knelt over my body and you said, good job, Hanger. I'm proud of you. You weren't proud of me. You were afraid of me. You didn't want me to feel the pain of loss like you had felt before. You didn't want it to light a fire under my ass for me to prove myself, to redeem myself. You didn't want it to make me become what you become, what I will become this Saturday when I beat you and become the AEW World Champion. I want to be able to shake your hand right here, right now, one last time. Good job, hey man. I'm proud of you. <laughs> and here our hero lies slain again. He could succumb. He could go back to the ways of old. But that's not what this journey is about. It's about so much more. It's a tale of redemption. And this right here is exactly why I love professional wrestling. Because this story, Hangman's Journey, it's so much more than just typical good versus evil. This is the tale of a guy who was promised greatness, who was spoken up to be greatness. He hits rock bottom in the highest point of his career and he plummets all the way down to the bottom. Yet, somehow, he builds his way up back to become the confident person he knows he can be. And if that isn't art imitating life, I don't know what is, because we've all been there. We've had our ups, we've had our trials, our tribulations, our downs, and yet we still got up. And that's what Hangman has done. And that's because what a cowboy does. You get up, you get spat on, you get thrown around, you get shit upon. If vice sucks, it's not the greatest. You could easily give in to your vices. You say the hell with that. Get off your ass and do something with your life. And hey, maybe he wins the world title Saturday night. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe this is just another part of his journey. But at this point, Adam Page knows exactly who he is and what he is going to be and what his destiny is. And that's what life's all about. It's about the journey. It may not be the most conventional path to take, 
but one way or another, you're gonna get to where you wanna go and where you want to be. And that's all determined by your self-worth and you believing in yourself and knowing what you're capable of. And life's full of all sorts of obstacles. And we can let things bog us down, tear us down, eat away, destroy us inside. But the fact of the matter is this. It's not about all the negativity that weighs you down. It's about how you take that and turn it into something. And that's, once again, why I find this story so fascinating and amazing. And ultimately, Hangman Page chose his journey. He took his path. He made the consequences and the sacrifices. And that's what cowboys do.